Okay, welcome back to TEDx Froom, Froom for Thought. I'm really excited to introduce Sue tonight. Sue has an amazing idea worth spreading, but also she is our 20th speaker in 2020 and our final speaker in 2020, which just feels even more magical. So Sue is an author and speaker and her idea worth spreading is that wearing your mortality with pride gives your life significance. Now I've sort of spoiled this a little bit because I'm actually going to ask Sue now to stand up because she really <laughs> is promoting her message wherever she goes, aren't you Sue? <laughs> I am and I'm very proud of this t-shirt particularly because this is my message is wear your mortality with pride and this talk is all about that. So without further ado, Sue, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you very Thank you much for joining us. Okay, and hello to all of you out there. Well, how on earth, you're probably asking yourself, is wearing your mortality with pride can give your life significance? Well, I'm going to start with a man called Ernest Becker, and um, he won a Pulitzer Prize for an extraordinary book he wrote called The Denial of Death. And in that book, he wrote, what man really fears is not so much extinction, but extinction with insignificance. And I know that to be true because I used to live a life like that. A little over 30 years ago, I was flying in a Cessna on a gloriously sunny August early evening and the plane was being piloted by a friend of mine. And in the distance, I could see the tiny little airport that we were heading for shimmering in the heat. And this should have been one of those sublime moments in life. But the truth was, I was so full of fear and dread and anxiety because back then my life was falling apart. The production company I was working for was on the brink of going under. I'd maxed out on my credit cards and I was in yet another failed relationship and terrified of being on my own again. And the, air, the, the, the plane then hit an air bump and the propeller stopped going round and we fell out of the sky and crash landed into a field. Miraculously, and I've no idea how this happened, neither the pilot nor I were injured, but sitting beside the wreck of that plane, I just felt as if I had been emotionally flayed alive because I just suddenly saw that my life was a sham. And that's the words that fell into my head. Your life is a sham. And I knew I had to do something about that if I was going to really do anything with my life. And I knew if I didn't, it would have been better to have died in the crash. So I did change my life. I knew I had to deal with all the self-destructive behavior that I was indulging in and the excruciating shame that this was causing me. And I was doing such a good job of that with excessive drinking and lots of very inappropriate partying and taking any kind of drugs I could get my hands on to try and fill this hole that I was living inside me, this horrible hole which really was to do with worthlessness, but I didn't understand it back then. Throughout the healing journey that I then embarked on, um, one fundamental truth kept on coming back to me, that I was mortal. One day, I didn't know how, when, I still don't know how and when, but my life will be over. And I knew I wanted to go to my deathbed, feeling proud of who I was and contributing something of significance because otherwise what's the point of all of this and then another realization came to me that to understand my broken relationship with myself and with life I really needed to look at my relationship with death and as I addressed my fear of death I began to address my fear of life and that's when things began to turn around for me and things began to start working because I suddenly saw that life actually is, or my life certainly is, 
a psychological and spiritual preparation for death. And knowing that and accepting that set me free to create a life worth living for and to create work that really gave my life significance. And part of that work is about really confronting the fear of, and denial that, of death that's been pervading our society for centuries. Because as I see it, when we're in denial of death, it makes us believe that we're immortal and invincible. And that can really turn us into maniacal consumers to prove that we are immortal. And then that makes us lonely and afraid and disconnected from each other. And guess what? We start fighting each other and wanting to be better than each other and want, wanting what everybody else has got or wanting power over each other. It's sort of a real fight for supremacy. But above all, it makes us believe that we're separate and above the laws of nature. And look at the mess we're in. But you know, when I started to really accept my mortality and this incredible life journey, this unique life journey, it really turned death into a wonderful teacher for me because through all the pain and suffering that I've experienced, and yes, that is part of the human condition, but it really showed me the true nature of love and connection. And I know I'm gonna take that knowing with me to the end of my life, and that's going to help me to transition into whatever comes next. So this is why I want to wear my mortality with pride because I believe that's all about embracing the pain and the joy of living life right now. And I don't think there's anything more significant than that. Okay, so you're probably going to be really relieved. You do not have to experience a plane crash to start wearing your mortality with pride. But I really do think all of us have to deeply think about what gives our life significance and how we can create significance in our life. Because goodness me, our world is going through such changes and challenges. And irrespective of what COVID has brought to our door, we're all facing such an uncertain future, not just for the human species, but for the entire planet. And if we really want to continue to create a life of significance, and I believe that we're really drawn to do that, we're called to do this within the turmoil and chaos that we're all confronting, and I believe that's going to carry on for quite a while yet. Let's do everything that we can to nurture life on this planet while we still have breath left in our body, however challenging or scary that might become. And at the same time, let's start being really kind and compassionate and patient with each other because for heaven's sake, we're all in this together. And so when we reach our deathbed, in whatever way that comes to us, because it will, we really can know that we have contributed something of significance. And that's why I hope you're going to join with me and start wearing your mortality with pride. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. It just seems such a fitting end to this uh, this year that we've described as challenging. And as you say, um, hopefully for many of us, we've really been faced with the fact that, yes, nature, whether it's we're talking about climate change or viruses that can affect us, you know, that we really do have to obey those laws of nature. And hopefully your talk will help people move on from having had that experience of realizing that realization mm. without the plane crash but you know yeah, but certainly you don't have to do that but i think it makes you know when we accept our mortality it makes us humble and i think it brings back that awe that sense of awe back into life because it is wow you know this life is extraordinary but we've kind of lost connection with all of that and that makes me really sad so that's 
my message is wear your mortality with pride and engage with it. You're certainly the living proof of that, Sue. So thank you so much for tonight. <laughs> and um, all it leads me to say is, um, yeah, we'll be back in 2021. Um, we're still crafting our plans for 2021, but we already have a couple of speakers lined up for January. So do join us again. And thank you again, Sue, for tonight.